Hello everypony, I'm Jeff Archfiend, and these are my thoughts on Philly Vanilli. Holy mother of Celestia! I think Amy Keating Rogers is making it her mission or something to get in as many musical episodes of MLP as she can. That or outdo Disney in terms of the music. The opening song with Fluttershy seemed to me to carry tones of Colors of the Wind from Pocahontas. Then there was the acapella with Big Mac and the pony tones, which led to some nice continuity nods. In fact, this whole episode had continuity nods, ranging not just from Charlie fainting from Big Mac's voice, Fluttershy's emphatic and direct no when asked to be part of the Pony Tones initially, Rarity acknowledging the fact that Fluttershy doesn't want to be in the spotlight, and then of course the biggest continuity item of them all, and the crux of the episode, the Poison Joke and Zakora. That was very nicely set up and kind of makes me wonder, did they plan this far ahead for this kind of scenario? I mean... Taking advantage of something from way back in Season 1 to have an impact in Season 4? Or it could just be a happy coincidence. Yeah, right, coincidence. I would like to address this common thread amongst the other reviewers though. The Pinkie Pie making Fluttershy crying moments and how out of character those were for her. I'd like to say those were actually in character for her. Uh, let me explain before I get shot. The main points every pony else keeps bringing up is the pranking scenario and the Gilda event. Whilst, yes, those are valid points that show that Pinky does indeed concern herself with Fluttershy's own well being and sensitivity, there have been points when Pinky has ran her mouth off. And that's what's going on here, in my opinion. Pinkie Pie is just running her mouth off and not letting her brain, or whatever remains of it, catch up to her mouth. She thinks she said one thing, but turns out that her mouth got in the way of her brain as pointed out here. Wait! Didn't I say that? Hardly! Whoops! There is one thing I'd like to point out, mainly because I can already foresee this getting skewed given certain aspects of the fandom, of any fandom really. Got the music, got the music, got the music in you. Yeah, like that's not gonna get taken out of context. We all know that in context she's bouncing around because she's either dancing to the beat or keeping herself in time with it. The half lidded eyes because she's content and happy and enjoys the performance. Of course, throughout the context, to bring in the shippers, among others whom shall not be named, and what do we get? Flutter Mac and her being all seductive. Just throwing that out there, and forewarning. One has to wonder if the animators are putting this stuff in on purpose for their more adult viewership. They've been giving nods to the brony community a few times this past season already, with derpy and more showings of famous background ponies, etc. Speaking of background ponies, when the dad pony appeared on screen at first, I thought this was going to be a very different route than the way it go than the way it went. Given his design, I thought he was going to be some kind of Simon Cowell esque figure, and either call the pony tones out on the lip syncing or sign them up for the record deal, and then have them called out on the lip syncing after they made him quite a lot of bits. If he was just going to be the dad to the very hyper energetic Zifferwill filly, why not just a generic design? Are we going to see him again later on, maybe, or something? Or are they just trying to make as many unique background ponies as they can for some reason? Probably marketing, but the reason... Meh. As for my take on this episode, it was a good one. Much better than Simple Ways, and looking forward to seeing how the rest of Season 4 pans out. We're in the home stretch now, past the halfway mark. I'm Jeff Archfiend, signing out. Oh, well, that's, um, huh. Bye!